Odin, the All Father, and Zeus, the King of Olympus. If these two deities, as they are portrayed in their respective mythologies, were to fight, who would win? Well, let's talk about it. But first, for those in the known, I will be using classical Zeus for this video, because Jupiter and above would be a bit too much for Odin in my opinion. In case you don't know what that means, check out my video on how powerful Zeus is, link in the description. Now, let's begin. But where do we start? The most sensible thing, I believe, is to first tackle their stats. You know, strength, speed, durability, all that. Thing is, assigning numbers to Zeus is easy. The problem is doing it for Odin, because there's a lot of room for interpretation in the texts. For example, in Norse mythology, there is an event called the Vanir Aesir War. It was a battle between two groups of deities, and it is said that during their clash, entire mountains were destroyed. Using this, you could argue that all the gods in the mythology together are only mountain level in strength. And yet, before this war happened, Odin, with the help of his two brothers, physically dragged the corpse of the giant Ymir. From Ymir's body, Odin and his brothers made the entire universe. So you could argue that Odin is strong enough to lift something that is the equivalent to a third of the mass in the universe. The truth is, we could be here all day and we will never reach a number we can both agree on. The only thing we can say for certain is that Odin does in fact have supernatural strength. He can, for example, grab something and throw it into space. He is definitely superhuman, but exactly how strong he is depends on how much you want to either wank him or lowball him. And this same problem applies also to his other stats, like speed or durability. So, if we cannot place an exact number on Odin, I say that the most elegant solution is to equate him to Zeus. Let's just pretend that they have equal stats, because otherwise we won't be able to move on from this point. Okay, so if they both have equal stats, then who would win? Well, now we get into the really fun part, talking about their abilities and equipment. The first thing we are going to tackle is the Thunderbolt of Zeus. As powerful as it is, the Thunderbolt is completely useless against Odin, because Odin has this thing called runic magic. They are 18 spells that give Odin all kinds of abilities. One of the spells makes it so that Odin is immune to fire, and the Thunderbolt of Zeus is described as producing fire. Another spell allows Odin to manipulate the elements, and the Thunderbolt of of Zeus is made of electricity. Odin also has a spell that gives him the ability to manipulate projectiles, and if none of that convinces you, Odin has a spell that makes it so that no weapon can hurt him. Since Odin has so many counters to the Thunderbolt of Zeus, I don't think it's unreasonable to argue that the Thunderbolt is useless. Now, the Thunderbolt is not the only weapon Zeus has, he also has a very powerful sword called the Harpe. But once again, Odin can make himself invulnerable to weapons, so the Harpe is also a non-issue. In addition, Odin has a spell that essentially gives him Superman style in vulnerability, as long as he's holding a shield, any kind of shield, which means punching him wouldn't work either. Also, both Zeus and Odin can transmute matter. Zeus could, easily, turn Odin into a rock and then throw him into the sun. But Odin can do that too, so their abilities of transmutation would cancel each other out. Alright, so, so far it seems like Zeus has no way to damage Odin. But what about the opposite? Does Odin has a way to kill Zeus? He definitely can't, you will say, because Zeus is immortal. Let's quickly address the alleged mortality of the Greek gods. While the Greek gods have no physiological needs, nor do they grow old or decay over time, we have seen in the mythology that divine beings can in fact die. You first have to minimum be in the same tier of power as them in order to hurt them, but once this criteria is met, they can be killed. But you could, if you want, reject this and dismiss it as head canon, which Fair enough. But even then, you must concede that Zeus can be wounded. Even if you are adamant on the fact that Zeus cannot die, if Zeus is chopped into a million pieces, he's as good as dead. So the question is, can Odin do this? To answer this, the first thing we're going to discuss is his spear, Gugnir. Now, the ability of this spear can be interpreted in more than one way, but for this video, we're going to go with a more classical interpretation. That is to say, the spear cannot miss. With this in mind, would Gugnir be enough to kill Zeus? Zeus? My answer is probably no. Zeus has survived having his head split in half before. Being stabbed by a spear won't stop him. Sure, if he gets sliced with the spear enough times, he would die, but that assumes he would stand there and let it happen. However, Gugnir is not the only way Odin can deal damage. In fact, he has something much more lethal. Odin has the power to curse people. In the Nordic sources, we have seen other beings use this cursing ability, and we could argue that Odin should be capable of performing similar feats. So, Odin could, if he wanted, 
make you crumble into dust. This would pretty much be instantaneously lethal, except for the fact that Zeus could probably reform from said dust. Zeus once transformed into golden liquid and then reverted back to his normal form without an issue, so reducing him to a pile of dust might be inconvenient at best. Then again, Odin is not limited in the way he can curse someone and he is very smart. You could argue he could definitely come up with something better than reducing someone to dust. And something very important to keep in mind when discussing curses is that Odin has a specific protection against curses. One of his runic spells makes it so that if you try cursing him, the curse bounces back to you. So if you wanted to argue that Zeus also has cursing powers because in his mythology he has cursed other people before, this wouldn't work on Odin, but we cannot say the same for Zeus. We have no reason to assume that Zeus is immune to curses. After all, just because he can do it doesn't mean he's immune to it. In my opinion, Odin's cursing power gives him a potential win con. He has a way to end the fight. However, there is one thing we have been ignoring, and that is the fact that Zeus could turn off all of the powers of Odin, just like he once did to both Poseidon and Apollo. But could Zeus do this, or would Odin be able to resist it? If you are of the opinion that Zeus can in fact disable Odin's powers, then the debate is over. Zeus wins. But you could argue that mythological gods work under what I like to call Dragon Ball logic. See, in Dragon Ball Super, there's this character named Topo, and he gains the power to erase things from existence. However, when the ability is tried on Vegeta, Vegeta simply punches the ability away because Vegeta is big strong, and therefore the ability doesn't work on him. And so you could argue that this same logic could be applied to our matchup. You could argue that Zeus simply cannot disable Odin's powers because Odin is big strong. Speaking of things Zeus could disable, Zeus could take away Odin's intelligence, which is one of Odin's greatest assets, but once again, you could argue that this wouldn't work because Dragon Ball logic. However, even if Zeus could not disable Odin's intelligence or his powers, there is still something he can do, and that's using the Aegis. The Aegis is some kind of protective device that Zeus has. Exactly what it is changes from source to source, but it is always indestructible. At its most potent, the Aegis is an indestructible set of armor, but this would make Zeus virtually unkillable, so instead let's contain the Aegis and say it's an indestructible shield. That makes it much smaller and easier to deal with. Well, except for the fact that the Aegis has the power to turn into stone anyone who looks at it, but let's just say this wouldn't work on Odin because Big Strong. Even then, there is one other thing the Aegis can do and it would definitely work on Odin. See, when you shake the Aegis, it inflicts everyone around you with some kind of fear effect. And as silly as this sounds, this fear effect would actually affect Odin, because it is within Odin's character to be fearful. He is terrified of Ragnarok, terrified of dying, and the Aegis would exacerbate this fear. Now, you would probably say, okay, big deal, Odin is scared for a while, how does this even help Zeus win? And the answer is, because it distracts Odin, which gives Zeus an opening to do something like cutting Odin's head off with a harpy. The Aegis then becomes vitally important when you remember that Zeus can know the future. From the moment the battle starts, Zeus would know exactly what's going to happen and he would use this knowledge to react accordingly. Now, of course, Odin can know the future too, but to do this, he needs to put on a dress and do a little dance. That's not going to happen in the middle of a fight, Odin would have to rely solely on his intelligence, and as smart as Odin is, I am sure we can all agree that knowing the future is better than being smart. Effectively, all this means that Zeus also has at least one win con. Now, with all of this in mind, the matchup sounds kinda like a coin toss, right? It seems like it could go both ways, however, Zeus still holds one more advantage over Odin, and that is the fact that Odin has an explicit weakness. Odin needs to eat magical golden apples, otherwise, he he starts losing his powers. From the text, it can be inferred that this happens fast, but even if we arbitrarily decide that it takes a million years for Odin to start weakening, Zeus can go on for that long. In a battle of attrition, Odin is bound to lose. And this, I believe, is the crux of this matchup. Both Zeus and Odin are very powerful, and you can make strong arguments for each of them taking the win, but the fact of the matter is that Zeus has an exploitable weakness. In my opinion, because of their many hacks and how they count each other, the battle would not end instantaneously, and the longer the battle goes on, the weaker Odin gets. And that is why, in my opinion, Zeus wins. Simply put, 
Zeus would outlast Odin. Now, this will be the part where I end the video, but I am sure that there are some other things that will be brought up, so I might as well address them while we're here. First of all, there's this argument that I've seen a lot when it comes to this matchup. Whenever this battle gets brought up, I always see at least one person using this argument, so I wanted to give my take on it. The argument goes like this. Odin would instantly win, because he is destined to die at Ragnarok. He cannot die elsewhere, ergo, fate itself would make it so that Odin wins. If you want to bring fate into this, Zeus is destined to be overthrown by a son more powerful than him. If he dies, this cannot happen, so fate would be on his side too. Personally, I feel like appealing to fate just to give either of them the win is a rather cheap thing to do. Another argument I have seen a lot is that Odin would win simply because he's smarter. This logic reminds me of this pick, except that we replace speed with high IQ. Honestly, people don't give enough credit to Zeus in this department. Sure, he's not as smart as Odin, but he's not an idiot. In case you didn't knew, Zeus planned the entire Trojan War and everything went according to Keikaku. The guy is smart. I have also seen people argue that the battle is completely one-sided on Zeus's favor because Odin quote-unquote lost to a wolf. The people who say this don't understand how powerful Fenrir was. Fenrir had the ability to indefinitely become stronger over time for no reason. Now, I am sure there are a lot more scenarios and hypotheticals we could spend time on, but this is good enough. Let's call it a day. So, in summary, who would win between Odin and Zeus? I say Zeus because it doesn't matter how much you want to wank one of them and lowball the other. The one thing you cannot ignore is that Odin has a weakness and this ultimately gives Zeus the advantage. But of course, I am not the authority on this topic, this is all merely my opinion, so if you think that Odin would easily decimate Zeus, then that's fine too. Your opinion is as equally as valid as mine. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.